One way. Uh, that's what an excellent song. <laughs> if you're joining us on the lake, uh, we do give you uh, a warm welcome uh, here to St Mary's as we gather for our worship this morning. All that you need to guide you through this service should be found in the Connect News leaflet. And we begin with our welcome. The Lord be with you. Also. Shout to God for joy, all you his people. Sing about the glory of his name. Give him glorious <coughs> praise for the wonderful things he has done. As we sing about those wonderful things that God has done, we sing our first hymn to God be the glory, great things he has done. So let us confess our sins 
in penitence and with faith. We pray together. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us. Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> we sing the glory. Caught a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something, but they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions, that they can take pride in themselves, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one to carry their own road. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the work should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their own flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest that we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised, circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except the trust of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. 
neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and message to all who follow this rule. This is the word of the Lord. Paul says, what counts is the new creation. And we sing that song, I am a new creation, <coughs> no more in condemnation. We stand to sing. <laughs> If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest upon them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker preserves his wages. Do not move from, around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcome to eat what is offered to you, heal those there who are ill and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcome, Go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town be wiped away from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Yeah, 
in the good old days before we went online, I would have came much closer. Uh, there you go. You're safe back there, right? <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, as your children, children of the new creation, help us to grow and to mature in our faith and our love. As we consider your word to us this day. Amen. Please do be seated. Now, I know some of you have been back to the cinema, uh, and uh, Steve, who remained nameless, uh, recommended that I definitely go and see Top Gun. I don't know, some of you have been seeing the new Top Gun movie? Yeah. There you go. Well, uh, I went Saturday night and managed to. to Friday night, no, oh, then. <laughs> sure, it didn't matter to you much other night was. Anyway, uh, 36 years ago, ah, since the first Top Gun, Tom Cruise hasn't aged a day to the looks of him. He's got that Peter Pan look about him. There you go. Uh, but in the movie, we come across Maverick, played by Tom Cruise, and he's challenged to teach this young group of fighter pilots how to go beyond what they already know. And in one scene, he, he picks up this huge dossier of, of, of an instruction manual that tells them what the F-18, the, the, the super former uh, aeroplane, can do. And he says, do you know this book? And they're all like, kind of, we know it like the back of our hands, you know, they know this book. And he takes it and he just throws it in the bin. And he says, well now, we have to learn to go beyond. Now we have to do more than just know the book. Have you heard of the Duck Church? You've moved that now. I've moved that now, see. It's because it's full of me and you used to that new microphone. So the Duck, the duck Church. The Duck Church sits on the hill uh, at the end of the Duck Village. And on a Sunday morning, all the ducks get up, they quack in the waddle, and they waddle up to church. And there, they waddle down the aisle and waddle into their pews and quack hello to each other. And then the great quacker gets up and he quacks and he quacks and he quacks. And basically, if you don't know duck language, I'll interpret as best I can. But basically, he's trying to tell these ducks that actually the great quacker in the sky has given them wings to fly. They don't have to waddle anymore. They've got wings and they can fly. They quack a few hymns and then the ducks waddle home. Sometimes we need a mind and a heart change. We need to be like those pilots Yes, we need to, to know God's word and to, to know what it says. But we also need to take it and put it into action. Just as the ducks heard that they could fly, they need to fly. We too need to live in a new way. This new creation that we have through what Jesus gives us. There once was a young man called Saul. He was learned, very studious, probably top of his class, well trained in the knowledge of the law, well versed in the traditions of his people. He knew all the acceptable customs and he kept every one of them. His tutors were basically saying he will one day be the next High priest of Israel. Keep your eye on this young man. He is going to be successful and lead his nation. And that young man saw. 
when he met Christ Jesus, when he encounters the risen Lord and begins to realize that Jesus offers new life, new hope, says actually, what I have learned is like garbage. It's like he takes the instruction book and like Maverick in the film, just throws it in the bin. And he said, that is the old way. These instructions said, yeah, this is the way we have to live, and that is good. But God has fulfilled the old way through the giving of Jesus Christ. And he gives us this new life in Christ. Through what Jesus has done on the cross, we come to be part of a new family, a multi-ethnic family, a multi-diverse family. No longer are we just the Jewish people following the Jewish laws. No longer do we need to, to, to be circumcised and not to have a bacon sandwich after church on a Sunday. We are being freed to live a new way, a way of the Spirit of God. Paul writes, Whatever I have gained, I now consider a loss to knowing Christ Jesus. This is in Philippians, another of Paul's great letters. And what is more, I consider everything of a loss that I have learned compared to the surpassing knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ, be found in Christ, and have the righteousness, not of my own self, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul is basically saying, you know, the sin and the law are combined together. The law of God's people basically highlights that we are sinners. The law tells us when we've gone wrong. But when Christ comes, Christ fulfills the law. And he says to you and me, I have paid the price. Under the law, we were punishable. But the good news is that Jesus has taken that punishment and frees us from the law of sin and death into the way of life. Life by the Spirit of God. And Paul calls this way of living the new creation. We have been forgiven we have been set free. We've been welcomed into God's great family. The old has gone and the new has come to us. We are no longer condemned as sinners, but are free to be children of God, free to bear much fruit by the Spirit indwelling in us and guiding us how to live. We read Paul when he's writing to the Galatians today. And it's as though he's dictating this letter to the church in Galatia. And as he's getting to the end, he's getting frustrated. He wants to underline and tell the people how important this news of new creation is. That it's as though he snatches the pen from the scribe who's writing the letter and says, see how I write in my own handwriting. I don't know if they could read his own handwriting, but he says, see how big the letters are. This is what he's underlining. This is the most important thing I want you to grasp. It doesn't matter whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised. It doesn't matter if you keep all these rules and laws and traditions. What matters is that you place your faith in Jesus Christ and that you become the new creation that he calls you to be.
Are we willing to surrender ourselves to Jesus? Willing to learn and to have a new mindset that helps us go beyond just the rules and the regulations, but to have a living and active faith that brings life to us, life to our church, life to the community. The cross sets us free. The cross before which we all stand. We stand as equals. Equally forgiven. And we're now raised up to be sons and daughters of the kingdom. How do we leave from this place? <coughs> Or shall we just waddle home? Amen. We turn to a time of prayer and intercessions for today. Let us pray. Let us bring our cares and our concerns before the God who loves us. We pray for more workers to gather in the harvest of the kingdom, for our churches to be places of welcome and wholesome spiritual nurturing. For a healthy balance of tradition and exploration. <coughs> we pray for our nation and the nations of the world, for an upholding of godly principles and just laws, for reconciliation, peace, and mutual cooperation. Lord, in your mercy. In our we pray for those among our families and friends who have no idea of the new life you offer. We pray for them to discover you so that they may share the joy of living in your love. And we pray for those suffering, suffering from skin disorder, and those disfigured by disease or accidents, for the lonely and the confused and the outcasts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take a moment for our own prayers for those people known to us and those departed. We pray for the dying and their loved ones for those who have passed through death and the families and friends who miss them. Surround them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise to you, Lord, and give you thanks for the fullness of this new life you have given us in Christ. Keep us renewed and filled with your Spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand together if we <coughs> We are brought into a new creation, a place where we are at peace with God. And through being at peace with God, we are called to be at peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also we share our sign of the peace. And as we come to the table, we'll be singing again. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed. Let me be renewed, flowing from the grace that I have found in you. Lord, I come to you. so that we can look at the world with your eyes. One day we will be with you in heaven, but already we can join <coughs> the saints and angels and sing all their joyful song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Almost down there. Get them. Please feel free to sit down here. <coughs> Father, you never forget us or turn away from us. Even when we fail you, you sent your Son Jesus who gave his life for us. He healed those who were sick, cared for those who were poor, and cried with those who were sad. He forgave sinners and taught us to forgive. For all your love, we give you thanks in the way that Jesus showed us. For on the night before he died, while he was having supper with his friends, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup and he offered you that, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. So, as we do what he told us, we open our hearts to him. We remember how he died and rose again to live now in us, together with him. We offer you these gifts. In them we give you ourselves. Send your Holy Spirit on us. And on this bread and this wine, that they may be the body and blood of Christ, and that sharing your life, we may travel in your company to our journey's end. With all your people, we give you thanks and praise through the Son and in the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us. And as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table of the Lord is here for everyone, whoever you are, from wherever you come. All people are welcome. At God's table, for we are all equal, one in Christ. So come and receive. Come and receive the food of the new creed.
Christ for you. Thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and mercy endures forever. Almighty God, guide us to serve you and to come to the fullness of joy in your new creation, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Our closing hymn of worship reminds us of again that new creation, that we are to be people who are growing and changing, changing from glory into glory. Love divine, all loves excel.
Feedback, uh, which reminds me I've got to speak to Elizabeth about uh, some dishes on duty. <laughs> um, the, there's going to be uh, the seasons of creations outlined the, the new study group, uh, an opportunity to study in a different way to look at a passage, but then to creatively uh, enter into a meditation. Uh, to be honest, it sounds like a uh, messy church for adults. <laughs> so, come along and look at a passage and then through arts and crafts and that explore what the passage means to you as we look at creation time uh, in the coming months. Not aware of anything else, so it's a couple of people. Yeah, a couple of people. Now, yes. Have you got a notice? Yeah, yeah, we've got that. There's a button embarrassed. We're we'll being kind to you, we're all wanting to sing happy birthday. Yeah, but we should sing happy birthday. Yeah, is there a notice you're giving me? Yeah, just, just a wee one. Uh, that over the last year or so, <coughs> one of our members, uh, who shall be remain nameless, uh, Janina, has uh, made jams um, and um, things for the church. And <coughs> in the last few months, she's raised uh, well over 180 pounds. So I think a round of applause. <coughs> so I think everybody needs to keep buying her jams. They're obviously jolly good, and I yeah. can vouch for that because I haven't tried them. So, yes. The so chutneys are all bad, eh? The chutneys are the chutneys, too. They're in the blue box. <laughs> yes, they're in the blue box at the back. So please keep buying them. And yes, shall we sing happy birthday? So, Maureen's 21 again. 21 again. <laughs> ah, I know. Girl, you happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maureen. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> so, so don't run off because there's cake at the back. Uh, come and join us uh, as we share uh, in the delight of a, a unique and special individual. Uh, so, we do bless you this day. Do join us for refreshments. Let's stand together. Go in peace, with love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.